The current warming began long before people had cars or electric lights. In the past 150 years, the temperature has risen just over half a degree Celsius. But most of that rise occurred before 1940. Since that time, the temperature has fallen for four decades and risen for three. There is no evidence at all from Earth's long climate history that carbon dioxide has ever determined global temperatures. But if CO2 doesn't drive Earth's climate, what does? The common belief that carbon dioxide is driving climate change is at odds with much of the available scientific data. Data from weather balloons and satellites, from ice core surveys and from the historical temperature records. But if CO2 isn't driving climate, what is? Isn't it bizarre to think that it's humans, you know, when we're filling up our car, turning on our lights, that we are the ones controlling climate? Just look in the sky. Look at that massive thing, the sun. Even humans at our present six and a half billion are minute relative to that. In the late 1980s, solar physicist Piers Corbin decided to try a radically new way of forecasting the weather. Despite the huge resources of the official Met Office, Corbin's new technique consistently produced more accurate results. He was hailed in the national press as a super weatherman. The secret of his success was the sun. The origin of our solar weather technique of long-range forecasting came originally from study of sunspots and a desire to predict those and then I realised it was actually much more interesting to use the sun to predict the weather. Sunspots, we now know, are intense magnetic fields which appear at times of higher solar activity. But for many hundreds of years, long before this was properly understood, astronomers around the world used to count the number of sunspots in the belief that more spots heralded warmer weather. In 1893, the British astronomer Edward Maunder observed that during the Little Ice Age, there were barely any spots visible on the sun, a period of solar inactivity which became known as the Maunder Minimum. But how reliable are sunspots as an indicator of the weather? Okay, I decided to test it by gambling on the weather through William Hill against what the Met Office said was a, you know, a normal expectation. And I won money month after month after month after month. Last winter the Met Office said it could be or would be an exceptionally cold winter. We said no, that is nonsense, it's going to be very close to normal. And we specifically said when it would be cold, i.e. after Christmas and February. We were right, they were wrong. In 1991, senior scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute decided to compile a record of sunspots in the 20th century and compare it with the temperature record. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to 1940, fell back for four decades until the 1970s and then rose again after that. When we saw this um, correlation between the temperature and solar activity and, or sunspot cycle lengths, then uh, people said to us, OK, it can be just a coincidence. So how can we prove that it's not just a coincidence? Well, one obvious thing is to have a longer time series or different time series. Then we went back in time. So Professor Fries Christiansen and his colleagues examined 400 years of astronomical records to compare sunspot activity against temperature variation. Once again, they found that variations in solar activity were intimately linked to temperature variation on Earth. It was the sun, it seemed, not carbon dioxide or anything else, that was driving changes in the climate. 